end of an icon. How much time you have until the popular downtown Portland food cart pods will need to pack up and leave. Food false positives. We verify whether eating certain foods can cause you to fail a drug test. And service with a smile and a suit. How you doing? Good, good, very good. The most popular guy at the Hawthorne, Fred Meyer, gets a boost from the community he greets every day in tonight's Those Who Serve. First at six, out with the old, in with the new. One of Portland's largest food cart pods has been ordered to move out by the end of next month. The site we're talking about here is the one at 10th and Adler. It's soon gonna be the home of a 35 story high rise. Let's go there live right now. Mike Benner there for us. What's the reaction down there tonight, Mike? Well, as you can imagine, Dan, it is not great. Customers are upset. One owner told me this is very bad. Another said he is overwhelmed, and here's why. Earlier today, these uh, food cart owners got notices to vacate by the end of the day, June 30th. That is one month from today. These food carts have been around for years. They're a popular spot for lunch and dinner, but they'll have to find a new place to set up shop. A 35-story high-rise is slated to be developed. It'll house a hotel, office space, private residences, and retail, among other things. The food cart owners knew this day was coming, but that does not make it any easier. Take a listen. I was a little bit shocked. Um, I didn't want to believe it, but it, it is what it is. Um, I'm kind of upset, but we can't really do nothing about it. So... I guess I'm just going to try to find a new location for it. All right, so reading up on the new development, they intend to have what they're calling a food hall, and they hope that brings some of the energy the food carts brought. Again, they need to be out of here by June 30th. If they don't go, they'll be moved at the owner's expense. We understand that construction should start out here later this summer or early fall. Back to you. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Oregon lost an influential veteran politician and dedicated public servant yesterday. We're talking about Senator Jackie Winter. She passed away at the age of 82 after a battle with cancer. And today her colleagues honored her life. KGW's Morgan Romero talked to some of those close to her. A somber feeling reverberated through the Capitol. On the Senate floor, Jackie Winter's desk was draped in black cloth a candle flickering in her absence. The state Senate met only to reflect on her life Thursday. There was many things about her that just being there, you, you were better. Winters passed away after a battle with lung cancer. She'd been absent from the legislature for weeks. It's been hard not having her here because we know that she really wanted to be here. She was a pioneer, the first African-American Republican elected to the Oregon House in 1998, before moving on to the Senate in 2002. A lot of us have known her a long time and have been through a lot together. Governor Brown shared a heartfelt message Thursday. I adored Jackie, Senator Winters. Um, she was a remarkable human being, and we are going to miss her very, very much. Described as a champion for Oregonians. She's the example of someone that didn't mind being the first, didn't mind standing alone when she had to, when it came to taking a stand on important issues. State leaders say the Republican from Salem stood for people, not politics. Jackie was a forgiving person and she was a compassionate person, had a big heart. She was passionate about juvenile justice reform. Her illness didn't keep her from that. I think she fought right up until the end and she had a big bill that passed uh, last week. And uh, I, I think once that passed, I think she was ready to go. Instrumental in passing a bill for Trailblazers specialty license plates, winners work to ensure the surcharge benefits youth-oriented causes. Her passion was all about benefiting those who needed a voice. Her passion was all about benefiting those who were vulnerable or underserved. Uh, she was also about investing in the future of this state. We're going to be missing her for a long time. Winter's legacy lives on. Uh, she gave this world 82 wonderful years. In the inspiration she instilled, in the difference she made. But her fire and passion will be sorely missed. The state of Oregon is going to miss Jackie Winters. Morgan Romero, KGW News. 
And no word yet on when her memorial service at the Capitol will take place. The mobile needle exchange in Gresham will survive for another year. It was at risk of being cut until today's budget vote ended up saving it. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich spoke to the organizers about the program. Lindsay? Well, thanks to an amendment to the budget that passed, Multnomah County is not making cuts to the health department's harm reduction program this year. That includes a mobile needle exchange. This white van will continue to be used as a mobile needle exchange in Gresham for another year. Around 315 people use the site and 250,000 syringes are exchanged there. The demand from clients for syringe exchange services just continues to increase every single year. In total, the program exchanges about 7 million syringes a year. The idea is to help reduce the spread of HIV and other diseases among drug users, which in the long run helps save the county money and health care costs, not to mention save lives. But the site is more than just a needle exchange. Staff say it may also be the first step to getting someone into addiction treatment. If we can establish some trust with them and say, you know, we can really vouch for these other folks in addictions treatment, they'll also treat you well as, as human beings with dignity. People are more likely then to engage in treatment. Some, though, don't agree with the program, saying it enables drug use and brings problems to their neighborhoods. Staff say otherwise. There hasn't been any scientific study that shows that providing people with medical equipment that they need to stay healthy um, actually increases their drug use. It's quite the opposite. The neighborhoods that have syringe exchange are usually cleaner and have less syringe debris. The site also hands out naloxone, a medication that reverses a drug overdose. Data shows this is helping save lives. Last year, 913 overdose rescues were reported. The health department will likely face another round of budget cuts next year that could again threaten this program. So they're trying to figure out a long-term solution to keep it going. Back to you. Lindsay, thank you. How you doing? Good. Good, good, very good. Today, we bring you an update in our series, Those Who Serve. We're going to catch up with Sam, the greeter at the Fred Meyer store in Hawthorne in Southeast Portland. His story generated more feedback than any other in this series. He has served his community with his smile, his positive attitude, and a lot of people love his sense of fashion. The community is now serving him, helping Sam realize his dream of going to fashion school. KGW's Pat Doris catches up with him for us. It's a Thursday morning, and Sam Schur is dressed up and ready for work. He loves fashion, loves wearing nice clothes, even dreams of designing them himself. It's part of who he is. This is part of who he is, too, a man with cerebral palsy. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. How are you? Doing good. Good, good. Very good. You'd never know it, but he's often in pain. He also has seizures, so he can't drive. Instead, Sam rides a special TriMet bus from his home in East Gresham, oh, yeah. working hard okay. to keep a smile yeah. and a good attitude. The bus often stops to pick up others with disabilities. Sometimes the ride stretches as long as two hours. Driver Jeremy Hurley remembers the first time he saw how Sam dressed for work. Well, it's unconventional because you don't normally see it, but I thought it was pretty cool. That's a pretty typical reaction. For the past nine years, Sam has stepped off the bus at the Hawthorne Fred Meyer, dressed in his very best clothes, to be a greeter at the store. Hey. He travels all this way because it's the closest store with this position. Thank you, man. And he just has to be in front of people, has to wow them with his sense of fashion. He often takes over for someone wearing jeans like his buddy Michelle. I always feel underdressed. I mean, that goes without saying. Look at the guy, you know. Yep, we know. How are you doing today? Some, like firefighter Kevin Pratt, snap pictures with Sam and his various looks. How are you doing? Good, good, very good. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone seems to know him. Good, what's up? How are you doing? So maybe it wasn't that surprising what happened recently. How are you? When word spread on the Next Door network How are you doing? that Sam dreamed of being a fashion designer but could not afford the schooling, hey. the community got busy. There were a couple people on the thread saying, oh, someone should start a GoFundMe. And I thought, well, how hard could it be? Thank you. Turns out, not that hard for Ann Seward who had met Sam just twice. The result, magical. It was great. I, I, I kind of feel like it's just taken on a life of its own. Um, 
so. Suddenly, people who liked and admired Sam had a way to help him. Yeah, I've been here. And did they ever. And first set a goal of $5,000, but. It's amazing it just miraculously happened like that. And I was just like, wow, it just miracles, miracles came about. So, yeah, you know. The community blew past that amount. Now she's aiming at 15000 It gives me a lot of hope. Um, I think communities need to come together more. Part of that happened in the parking lot. Oh, hi. hi. Thank you. When Sam's mom met Ann for the very first time. You're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Vicki Weber has her own challenges. She's living with MS. She's so proud of her son. Sam is special. I, I know he's a very special kid. He just did this last night. She showed me his artwork, talked about his passion for fashion, and about the wonderful gift of the GoFundMe money for Sam's education. We cannot believe it. We're, it's unbelievable. Sometimes the world can seem like a cold place. Yeah, thanks. I love this guy. Thanks. You did a good job. But the reality is often quite different. It's so nice to meet you. It makes his day. It just takes a little digging below the surface to get to know each other's gifts and how we can all serve each other. Pat Doris, He's wonderful. KGW News. He is wonderful. Thank you so much, Kathleen. All right, Pat Doris reporting. He always tells a good story once again. Uh, it, it, this is just when the internet comes together and does the right thing. This is really, really fun. We just checked again. Uh, Sam's GoFundMe nearly at $6,000 now. So you know, we love Sam, and I, I just love this community for stepping up and doing that for Sam. And if you'd like to donate, we have a link on KGW.com. Let's keep it going. And if there's somebody serving your community, we'd love to tell their story. Pat, as you know, does a great job. He wants to hear from you. Just email us at mykgw at kgw.com. So what does it take? What does it really take to get booted from an Uber? Well, we'll soon find out how the app is now going to eventually ban riders. And we get your opinion on this, whether they should even be allowed to do this. Live from the Antarctic, how the U of O is giving us a glimpse below the ice for the first time. And I'm Matt Safina. We've had thunderstorms popping all over Oregon and Washington today, including this cell from our sky cam in the Dow. It's very impressive there. We'll track the latest storms, let you know if we'll see more tomorrow, and of course, the forecast for your weekend.